you. What up? All right. Um. So, uh, we got season three, episode nine of the Ricky Gervais show. Hmm. Okay. Okay. What we got? This is Earth. Earth. <laughs> Earth. Okay. Okay. Earth. The greatest place in the universe. Maybe. As we know it. Yeah. So yeah. far. Yeah. <laughs> so far. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see. Uh, see what Carl's got to say about the Earth, man. Yeah. <laughs> Might be some other planets out there. <laughs> we'll see. We'll talk some interesting stuff about uh, some better the weather. Saturn or Jupiter, one of them two. Yeah. yeah. Terraform Mars. Maybe they had life before. For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. This is one of them. Testing. Is that right? Hello, and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. Let's accept, right, that at some point, about 13, 14 billion years ago, there was nothing. There was no space for the nothing to be in. There was no darkness, no light, no, no, nothing. Okay, literally nothing. Except what is nearly a point in space that contained everything in the known universe, okay? Suddenly, Big bang. that exploded and in a matter of minutes, the universe was pretty much as it is now. And in all the debris, in all the dust, things started to cling together, one of which was the Earth. Can I have Carl pick up the story from there? <laughs> um, probably nothing for quite a bit. OK. Yeah. Just sort of floated about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it wasn't causing the problem because it wasn't annoying anyone. No. See, we don't get a chance of that these days. No. You pop something down, someone says, move that. <laughs> Dangerous, what is it? Yeah. Back then, nothing. So it's hanging around, and if you leave something somewhere, something will sit on it. Right. <laughs> OK, if you leave something somewhere, something will sit on it, yeah? Yeah, something, something had to sort of happen, didn't it? I'll tell you what it's like. Go on. In the same way... Um, Penicillin. Go on. Happened. Go on. It was the bread was sat there. It goes off. Mm. Air would have uh, created the greenness. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! This sounds like the Bible. That is that is like the Bible. Air created the greenness. That's amazing. Come on, come on. Because I want to. I'm, I'm, I'm learning it. I'm learning. And once you've got something, that leads to otherness. <laughs> <laughs> Listening to the yeah, ways of man. I know. <laughs> what are you gonna do? I'm gonna write uh, a thing about how everything was created. But hang on, carry on. Yeah. So, well, so, so we've got, so we've got, so we've got, we had greenness, and now we've got so something. So the air created the greenness, and then what is it? Then we have what was just it? otherness. Other from otherness. otherness. <laughs> because once you've got, once you've got, from greenness comes otherness. Once you've got one thing, <laughs> others come. Yes. But the air created the greenness. <laughs> then you got otherness. If you create something, others will come. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. No, so, but tell me, take me, take me on. Continue this, this, this story because this is fascinating. So, what? Where are we now? Then? What? If I was to stand on the Earth at this moment in time, what would I see? Um, not that much. You wouldn't want to stay. <laughs> but there's greenness. Little, little patches little of greenness. Patches of greenness. Okay. <laughs> little bit of rubble knocking around. <laughs> a bit of rubble. There was a bit of rubble. <laughs> um, <laughs> we've still got a long way to go. We want to get Mind to life, rubble. don't we? Okay. So, well, let's get, so, so, skip forward. So, 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 so everything was right. Okay. It was the right distance from the sun. Okay. Yeah, but even if it, it wasn't, way, we, it we'd, have, we'd still been creating. No, we wouldn't. We would, something no, we would have done. No, we wouldn't. Have. I want to hear Carl's opinion on this, Rick. I'm not <laughs> interested in facts. I want to hear Carl's so opinion. So, are you saying? Um, if if the atmosphere right around the Earth wasn't about ninety nine uh, percent nitrogen oxygen with one percent other gases, 
we'd have still had something else. Something would have been around. What I'm not saying it might, it might it might be better than us. Hmm. It might be worse than us. What would it look like? Um, well, they say it's hard to say because they say, don't they, that it's the conditions that mould you into the yeah. shape and colour, sure. and uh, you know everything else that makes you the person that you are. So, okay, let's take Pluto. We know that's the farthest away. So it's, it is dark and cold there. Right. What? How do you imagine the creatures that will develop there? Will Big eyes like? and hairy. <laughs> Because we have hang on. You uh, always say yeah. animals change to suit the conditions. I'd have thought if if planet's dark, you don't need eyes because things that live underground or at the bottom of the ocean, they don't they don't have um, eyes or, uh, or or colour because there's no point. Yeah, but what I'm talking about, are we saying we're living inside Pluto or on the top of it like we do here? Why would we live inside Pluto? Oh, no, he oh, could, oh. couldn't support life, full stop. But, but um, this, I mean, is one of the most ridiculous conversations we've ever had. He <laughs> seriously could put everything in place on a ridiculously false premise. No, Carl, we're this. saying now right. that the world's overcrowded. Right. There's too many people on it. Right. We're running out of houses. People are living <laughs> in basements. Now, that's only one step away from, from being molish. <laughs> We're already going underground because Molish. we're going out of space. Molish. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Right. Come on. Keep going on left. I want to hear his point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, what you're saying is people, they don't acknowledge the, the crust of the earth. So, you're saying within five years there's going to be sort of mole like people living in basement flats well, with well, no eyes. But hold on, though, in your. In your <laughs> according to you, <laughs> the lower they go, the colder and darker they go, the hairier and better eyes they'll have. Uh, well, it depends. No, I was only saying they'd have better eyes if they're on a dark planet where they're outside, so they still have to look out for things that they can trip over. If we're going, if we're going, <laughs> if we're going underground, they're, around, they're so concerned. <laughs> That's the whole evolution is about what we don't have to trip over. My own degrees, my knees. You've got knees. They got them on Earth. Coincidence, isn't it? Do you recycle? I don't really no. do all that. I don't separate stuff. I don't sort of put there's the cans, there's, there's the paint. You don't do that? You just throw it away, do you? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's bad. Sorry, that annoys me. That. that annoys me when you just put it in landfill, mate. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> <know. It's laughs> <possible>. There's nothing <laughs> for all the bins. Yeah, we have to do... You've got a recycle box you stick outside. Yeah. We are now. Yeah, I have that. Well, no, you've got, to, you've got to ask for one. I tried to get rid of a, um, a sofa, right? It's got a new sofa. Add the old one. You try and get rid of one of them, it's murder. Right. I called up the council, said I want to get rid of it. They said we're not coming round there till Friday. It's like a Monday. I said it's in the way. So I put it outside. I said you put it outside, you'll get a fine. I said, yeah, but you don't know where I'm going to put it outside. <laughs> yeah. So now outside my house. Yeah. So they said, well, if you do that. We've got your number. What's the sofa like? It's a beige one. Well, if you see that. Mm. So um, they said if you if you want to pay to have it collected, we can come and get it tomorrow, thirty quid. I said I'm not paying for it. It's madness. Yeah. So hung up, annoyed. Call me dad up. He said, oh, I saw this thing on the telly saying that you can donate your furniture to people who haven't got a sofa. Look it up on the internet. So I looked it up. There's a firm that does it. Right. Uh, right, cheeky sons. Called them up, said, I've got this sofa here. I want to donate it to someone who hasn't got a sofa. He said, uh, oh, what's it like? Is it in good condition? Yeah, it's all right, yeah. Well, why are you getting rid of it? <laughs> <laughs> I said, because we've moved into a bit of a bigger place and the sofa looks daft in the corner. It's, it's too small, so I'm getting a bigger one. There's no wrong with it. How big is it? How many people does it sit? So it depends how big you are. You can sit two people on it, but it's not the comfiest. But it's, it's in good condition. It's none of your nonsense like stuff. It was expensive when I bought it. He said, right. He said, uh, is it safe? I said, what do you mean? He said, is it fad proof? <laughs> so I said, oh, no, he said, well, go and get the um, lift the thing up. He's got me running around looking at the sofa. When I, I wasn't giving it away. I had to lift it up. It had a picture of a fag on it. I said, yeah, it's got a picture of a fag on it. And, uh, could, I, could I just uh, point out, uh, fag is a slang for cigarette. When he says, is it fag proof, he's not going to open the cushion and someone's go, you it's me! <laughs> so I should explain that straight away. So anyway, it turned out it was fag proof. I came and picked it up, took it away. Uh, that was that. <laughs> but look at the hassle. Look at the hassle it takes to get rid of something. And then they say to you, do not be dumping stuff on the street. You know, it's, it's that thing of having to wait for certain days of the week and you can't always keep hold of something. For mm. a certain day of the week, because it's big. A mattress is a, it's one of them things you can't get sort of rid of. Or you can't stick it somewhere, because no. it's in the way. It's a big 
clumpy bit of furniture, isn't it? Yeah. Um, There's not a bit of furniture really in mattress, but I know what you mean. Well, it's <laughs> new, a new sideboard. Yeah, don't, don't, don't lean on it, it's a bit, it's a bit spongy. Uh, what are you keeping it? We can't keep anything in it, it's just full of springs and stuff. <laughs> no, but it's you know what I mean? It's a furniture, to be honest. Well, it's it part should of... be on a bed, to be honest. It's part <laughs> of a furniture bit, isn't it? Did I tell you that time when... I don't think you'd even ever count a mattress <laughs> as a piece of furniture. Of course you can. It's functional. And where do you stop? Is a pillow a piece of furniture? <laughs> is, is a, it, a, a blanket? <laughs> Oh, a nice bit of furniture you're wearing. They'd be trousers. <laughs> They're furniture uh, if you pop them up against a wall. <laughs> Can I tell you that time when we first bought a flat? Go on. We bought a flat uh, in Manchester, right? And yeah. You, you know, when you first buy a place, it's expensive, isn't it? And it's a big bit of furniture, a flat, isn't it? So, you know, we bought a sofa, we got a table. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, you don't mean you bought a sofa, you ended up with a table. No, no. Oh, you bought, bought a sofa, sofa and a table. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I was, I was, I didn't, I didn't know. Suzanne said you'd buy a sofa and you came back with a table. Now, back then, I wasn't as wise as I am now. Fucking hell! Oh, what was he? It's <laughs> so not in a jar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> Can I just apologise to any slot in a jar that's listening and was offended by that comment? <laughs> All right. So, so I ordered a bed. <laughs> <laughs> I ordered a bed. Yeah. It turned up. Oh, well done. <laughs> what the fuck? That's I a thought, big treat. I thought... <laughs> I think went down. She creeped this time. That's the end of the story. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 no. So I thought... I thought oh. I'm going to get this in the bedroom, set it all up. Suzanne comes home from work. The bed's done. She'll be well happy. Yeah. yeah. So I get it all up there in the lift and what have you. It seems like I'm missing something here. Put it together, no mattress. <laughs> <laughs> there was no mattress. No, it's just because it's like, you know, I'm thinking, yeah, I've got all the screws, I've got the slats at the bottom, there's, there's the post and that. So I put it together. Where's the uh, sofa spongy bit of furniture that usually sits on top of the, uh, the more rigid bit of furniture? So I called him up and said, there's no mattress with it. He said, no, it's not part of it. So what do you mean it's not part of it? A bed isn't a bed without a mattress. It's, it's a climbing train, right? So um, he said, he said uh, you know, you can buy one. We have got them in for that thing. But it was like 400 and odd quid. And I don't know why telling me this, I know this. this is, I have more beds, I understand this is how it works. The mattress isn't a bed, no, the, the bed is something else. Yeah, but it? that's wrong. You cannot use a bed without a mattress, is what I'm saying, so don't <laughs> sell it without it. No, but some people replace the bed frame that's with fine. and keep the old mattress all the That's fine, around. once you've invested in it and you go, oh, will I buy a new bed or will uh, I just buy a new mattress? Fine. Well, they're not going to keep selling beds with new mattresses <laughs> because you've already got a mattress. What? A bed and a mattress without any pillars and blankets is no uh, good, but you don't expect that to come with it. At least you can sleep on that. You can sleep on a spongy bit, you can chuck a coat over you, you can yeah, use a push off a sofa. I'm thinking some fuckwit might buy it without the mattress, we may do it. So anyway, so I was like, oh, yeah. I didn't think of this. So I found the dad up. I didn't think of this, so I called me dad up. Dad, it's your fuckwit son again. All right, so how's it going? Ah, shit. Oh, so I said, I've got my no mattress on it. Can, you know, can you get us one? So he said, oh, I'll, I'll have a word, I'll call around, right? So he calls back, like, an hour and a half later. He said, uh, got your mattress, uh, go round to Alf's. Alf is me sort of uncle who isn't an uncle. All right. right? Uh, he's the one who I've told you about who had two tellies, one that worked picture-wise and one <laughs> that worked the sound. Now, the thing is, I remember, he, uh, he said, yeah, 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 I've uh, got a mattress, come and get it. So I go, oh, oh, Why does he sleep on the fucking mattress if he's got one? Why does he sleep in a fucking boat if he's got a mattress? He's there? terrified of flooding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I get there oh, and uh, it's in his van. Uh -huh. He's sorry, he's driving around with a mattress in the back of a van. What is he, a fucking serial killer? Fucking hell! So I thought, so going to be happy. Dragged it out of the van, chucked it in the car, thought she wanted to know. You know what I mean? So, uh, so I dragged that back. You know, I'm going to make it to rush out by this point. You know, she's going to get home. Anyway, get home, drag it into the lift and what have you. Drag it up, drag it into the bedroom, stick Don't it on. Don't trust two things Sheet on it and that. Suzanne comes in. Uh, she goes, what is that smell? And I said, so what? She said, it's like oil and but hold on, why didn't you smell it? <laughs> no, it doesn't make sense. I think I just sort of got used to, Maybe it, because I got in the back of the van, <laughs> smelt that, thought that's in the van, then I got used to that smell. Yeah. It's in the back of my car, folded yeah. up. 
I'm, yeah. I'm concentrating on trying to get this bed made before she gets in. Sure. Uh, so anyway, she's going, what is it? I said, I've got this off Alf. She said, we can't have that. She said, you know, it's a new flat, nice clean flat and everything. We've got this old thing that stinks. Get rid of it. It was murder getting rid of that. And I had to tip it. I right. went round the back of some supermarket and left it there. Because you can put it around. <laughs> Illegal fly tipping. Well, no, because I think it's <laughs> illegal and bad when, you, when you're chucking it out, say, at a bus stop or somewhere on a high street or something and people are going, that looks a mess. I chucked it near the bins at a supermarket. I'd gone out of my way. I thought, where is this not going to be offensive? <laughs> what you just going to I think I did try the tip. Oh, no. No, there was a massive queue. Uh. There was uh, a massive so queue. Laziness, so laziness, Rick, a sorry. Queue at the tip. A massive queue. Where I remember was this? it. Oh, Stratford. Stratford, that was. Why is there a queue for the tip? I don't know. I remember, <laughs> yeah. I remember driving past it now. A queue for the tip. And um, that was. That so don't go on about you couldn't get rid of it. It's because you could be asked to queue up, you lazy bastard. Um, couldn't get rid of it. But what was he thinking? Why was he panicking? One, why did he get a bed without a mattress? Two, why is he called his dad to get him out of mattress related problems? <laughs> his dad is a. Alf. Alf's got one in the back of a dirty old fucking van. <laughs> oh, that should be all right. No, but the thing is, what I'm saying is, when I was in that bed shop and I'm going, oh, yeah, good bed, good bed, I'm sitting on it, I'm sitting on a mattress with it. At no point did he say, now, have you thought about what sort of mattress you want? Have you got orthopedic problems or whatever? That didn't come up. He said, there's your order, there's your address. I'm not a bed man. I go to the bed man to get bed advice. In the same way, same problem here. I've had work done recently with a... Uh, Dad, uh, what? How to get rid of a body? Let me call out. <laughs> I've worked done recently, right? Bathroom, retiled. Yeah. Right? It's been a nightmare. Polish fella. Right. Not a word of English, which makes it hard. Mm. I've got him in as a professional to do it. He's sticking grout down the toilet. <laughs> you know, when after they put like the grout in the tiles to finish it off, yeah. anything that's left, he didn't put it in the bin and get dispose of it properly. Mm. He stuck it down the toilet. Yeah. And now it's there, the grout's there at the bottom of the toilet. Is it really? Yeah, with a screw in it. Well, you can drain it, can't you? You can turn the water off, get rid of it. Drain the water. No, it won't seem to go around the U-bend. Well, no, Stop you get it out there, you dry it off with it so there's no water in there. Well, just stick your hand in there. Get your hand in there. Why don't you put a, a, a well, barrel last time I did that, once last time you called up and had me hand down a grid, and you were going, what are you doing? Get someone out to do that. You yeah, called yeah, up here, I was up to my shoulder, Steve, in, like, yeah. glunge. <laughs> <laughs> what annoys me, Rick, is he makes up his own words. Well, I'm going to use that for flannels, mate. Uh, <laughs> do you know the carrier bag problem? Sure. I was in, I was in the supermarket, yeah. and uh, it's that point when they'd... Uh, they turned round and said, do you want a carrier bag? And I said, yeah, I bought like milk, loaf, I think I bought some uh, pikelets. Pikelets? Some what? <laughs> some what? pikelets! <laughs> it's like a thin crumpet. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you tell me that before? The yeah, yeah. There's a word I'd get rid of. Pikelets. There's a word I would get rid of. Thin crumpet. I could, I've got time to say thin crumpet. I do not <laughs> yeah. have a specific, specific thin word. Thin crumpet. But, um, uh, these, uh, these, that's not a crumpet. Why? <laughs> Two things. <laughs> call it a pikelet. Is, is, I'd, I'd spend over a tenner anyway. Right. right. I get to the what, it, Can you make a, a pikelet by squashing a crumpet thin? <laughs> It's tough. Yes. I've oh, tried wow. that. What if you cut one in half? No, it doesn't. It's not the same. No. I've, I've tried but squashing thick a crumpet. It condenses a crumpet that you need a thin Depends one. where you go. <laughs> They've got thicker. I'm not, I'm not enjoying the thicker crumpet at the moment. Why? Because yeah. the outside burns and the inside does nothing. It's like eating dough. I've, I've cut them out of my diet. <laughs> Have you? Right. 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 It's, it's, straight now, it? it's also <laughs> because it's not the 1950s anymore. Yeah. So, uh, so I bought all this stuff, it's over a tenner. Uh, she said, do you want a carrier bag? I said, of course I do with all this, you know. Yeah. She said, five pence. I said, you what? She said, five pence for a carrier bag. I said, I come here all Good. the time for the park. No, I'm right behind this, right behind this. Mm. Why? Charging for carrier bags, yeah, absolutely. Think, Lazy like... bastards. I take carrier bags down the supermarket every time I go down there. Yeah, we've got a drawer full of carrier reuse. bags. Oh, I use them, reuse them. Can I put, just put a question in. Go on. I do normally, I oh. reuse them. Oh. But I didn't know I was on my way home from work that day. Fine, so but this is the problem. Up. So be it. So That's you. <laughs> I'm going to know it's 5p, otherwise you carry yeah, on with it. Then you've got another one. You got right, so I said, oh. I said, how's that going to work? How's my five pence going to work the environment? Typical, that is the attitude. That sums it up, yeah. doesn't it? Well, it's it's something else, isn't it? It's just making you think. It's the turtles. Right, yeah. Yeah, turtles. That's why they get caught up in them, yeah. Terrible. She said, she said. They think they're a jellyfish and they go, oh, they swallow it, yeah, and choke. So I said, right, so it's all right. I can kill a turtle. Kind of for five pence. You're not that bothered then. Why do you want to kill what? a turtle at all? Because if carrier bags shouldn't be out there, yeah. ban them. But don't say you're killing turtles with free carrier bags. If you want to kill a turtle, <laughs> five pence. Oh, there you go. <laughs> five pence, you kill a turtle. Uh, He's right. That's what's annoying me. <laughs> it's not compulsory though, is it? 
But what they're saying is uh, that that five pence goes towards something, doesn't it? She said, we can't give you carry bags anymore because you're killing turtles. She, there's no way she <laughs> said, <laughs> we can't give you... Carl Pilkington, stop killing fucking turtles. Five <laughs> pence. All I'm saying is, if carry bags are killing turtles, stop uh, making yeah. carry bags. Because the thing is, I can afford yeah. two carry bags. Two turtles are dead since I've been <laughs> So, oh, so, flash. What, so <laughs> does it matter? Does it matter that much or not enough or what? What's the point here? There could be for that five yeah. p. You could get a little fed out there when he sees a yeah. turtle going. He goes and sticks his finger down his throat. But what taste are they getting out of a jellyfish anyway? <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, they carry a bag's better, isn't it? Yeah. It gives. Oh, pipe it. Someone threw a crap. You could pipe it away. He's right. Talking about the Earth, really? Carl is going around the Earth. I've only done Egypt so far. What do you think of it? They're probably the, the, the greatest and earliest Should civilizations. Yeah, just yeah, hang up on about that. Well, yeah. and it's like that's slowing them down. I think. Unlike the English, yeah. we don't drone on about our great past. No, no we shouldn't. Yeah. I don't think we should. Carl, move on. You go on about doing boxing when you turned up once and got battered by people. Yeah, because you asked me about it. But right. the thing is, they're constantly. It's like they haven't moved on. Uh, everywhere you go, you see the Sphinx or a pyramid on mm. something, and it builds it up too much, so that when you actually get there. You feel like you've seen it so many times that it doesn't impress you that much. But I like the, uh, you know, it's it's different. I like all the, you know, locals and stuff and the way they are and that. And that's that's oh, good. Isn't it? Oh, Just a lot of old people. Yeah. A lot of old and the old and the young mix more than our, our lot do. Uh, there was only a couple of things <laughs> that I didn't like, and that was uh, the toilets. The toilets are pretty depressing. Sure. Why? What's up with them? Just, um, it's just old in the isn't it? Uh. And I, I like the toilet, it's sort of, you know, neat and, and to sort of go in one of them, you don't want to hang around. It's yeah. sort of, you just want to do the job and get out, but my insides don't work like that. You like to sort of relax a bit. And, uh, and you can't do that there, because you've got flies whizzing around your head. And uh, there was one time when we were out and about, and I'd had a bit of hummus or something. Because that's you can't get away from all that. Mm. I've been dipping my bread in it, and I suddenly thought, oh, my body feels funny. I found a toilet. Cut through this market. Didn't know one was there, but you sort of smell it. It's like you're getting close to one. Yeah, it stinks. <laughs> so in, there's like, like a fella sat there, really old. He must have been like 93, about two seats. Uh, sat there with a rag, and you have to pay him to use the uh, toilet. What's the rag for? He doesn't want your ass for it. I don't know. I don't know. But well, the, did he, all the toilet's never been cleaned by the looks of it. I had to give him like five Egyptian pounds, whatever that is. I don't know how much that is. But I don't know what he's doing for that money. Because the place I've never seen a mop. So I go in there, open the door, and it's like one of them holes in the ground. I go, oh, God, can't use that. Push the next door open, that's the same. You know, get to the end one, open it. Normal, normal toilet. All right, ding dong. Brilliant. <laughs> Sit down there, do what I do, look round, no toilet paper. Oh no. He's waving the rag over the top of the cubicle. Yeah, all those people get pound. So I'm thinking, oh God. I'm thinking, can I just get up? Because it was quite a clean, you know. <laughs> it was quite a clean drop, sure. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm thinking. Don't they use water? Uh, don't they use water? Well, they have a hose pipe, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't fancy that. Well, that's cleaner, though, isn't it? A hose uh, pipe, I really no, get it. Uh, uh, <laughs> can it be? Why? Because that's just going to. That's, that's not going to clean it properly. It's going to get rid of some bits, isn't it? It's like when you clean a car. Yeah, use a hose, but where's a sponge? <laughs> <laughs> sure. So, uh. Yeah, that's so, true. You go! You rinse off a plate, but then you always hear a little wipe as exactly, well. Exactly, but I like it. That's when the bloke knocks on the door and goes, you need sponge? Yes. <laughs> uh, so I'm in there, I look at the door, there's no handle on the door. So I'm, I'm trapped in there anyway. Someone's <laughs> nicked the handle. So I can't open the door. I'm sat there, there's no toilet paper. I'm calling, uh, I'm calling like the people I'm out there with. Did you bring, yeah. did they bring you some toilet paper then? Um, no, what well, they got it from the like the fella with the. the oh, he had to supply for some right. on the way in. So I think yeah. that's what you do. But they don't they don't give you a full a full <laughs> roll. They give you like a strip, right? Which I'm pretty wasteful with toilet paper. Mm. <laughs> I prefer to do a good job, use it up, replace it, rather yeah. than five sheets. I've never done that in my life. Right. Um, so my uh, brother taught me something when he was in the army. He said you used to have to sort of put your hand through it, get it all, then use that paper to get it up your hand. What? 
when you're in the army, yeah. they're taught survival techniques. Right. And they said if you're a court with very little toilet paper. <laughs> survival technique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. What did he die? Died of a dirty <laughs> ass. <laughs> uh, hold on, wait a minute. Right, what is this technique? You get the toilet paper. Right. Use two sheets. Right. Fold it over. So you've got, normally, to one sheet is two ply. You've right. got four ply. Right. So it's, sort of, it's like a bog glove, a bog paper glove. Yeah, so you put your hand through it so you make a hole. Yeah. What do you mean? Make a hole? Make a hole so your hand goes through it. Yeah. Then you can wipe your, wipe your arse with that. <laughs> what, then, your hand? Yeah, and then the toilet paper that's left, you pull it off like that and you wipe your fingers with it. So you've still got shit on your hand? Why don't you just wipe your arse with the toilet paper? Because you've only got a couple of sheets because you're in the jungle, right? And it's oh, survival now. It's so, survival so what's the difference between wiping your arse with your hand and trying to off your hand or wiping your ass with a toilet paper and putting your fucking trousers up. I don't know why this is a technique. That's some sort of mad sergeant's idea. What I do, boys, is I like to smear shit all over my face and then use the one sheet of toilet to wash my face off. It doesn't make any sense at all. Do you know it's just something for you? You like wiping your ass with your hand. You don't yeah, like paper and like water. Shit. You like a sponge. <laughs> One of those big foam hands that you see at the sporting <laughs> events. <laughs> so you just yeah. go in with that, like Kenny Everett. You go in there, two <laughs> big exposure. You sit down, you wipe your ass, you just leave yeah. it. You just leave and then you can cheer about it as you leave. <laughs> Whatever you want. Be careful with the giant sponge finger that it got the cars. I cause damage. <laughs> that is a problem. <laughs> 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 you got that. You got shit all over your fingers. <laughs> yeah, so he's not comfortable having shit all over his ass, but he'll have it all over his fingers. <sighs> yeah, I think his dad was trying to set him up. <laughs> his brother. And his brother? Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, definitely. His brother's trying to walk around having his fingers smell like shit. <laughs> Yeah, just use toilet paper. I'd rather use leaves or something than use my fingers. <laughs> Grass. <laughs> it's a whole bunch of shit. Uh, you should have used that damn hose. <laughs> uh, he's right, though. I mean, shit, you, you know. <laughs> Where's a sponge? <laughs> you need something to wipe. <laughs> Get it. Right. Right, man. Those things are weird, though. I could, I, I've yeah. never used one of those. The no. bidets. No, no, I never used it. They had a hose. I wouldn't use no just hose. <laughs> you just got a hose. <laughs> Nigga. And no toilet paper? No toilet paper. With no toilet paper, I probably have to use have to use it. a hose. Use, man. I'd have to be in there until I dry off and shit. Like, even in bidet, like, hey, that, you know what I'm saying? Is it like some strong power of water? You know what I'm saying? Does it like spray shit all over the place? You know what I what think saying? it's like a strong stream. But yeah. that's like, has to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Give me a wet wipe. But yeah. Okay. Earth. Earth <laughs> that yeah. Was... <laughs> yeah. I, I believe it was too vague of a topic for uh, for Carl. You got to give him more. Yeah. Like, I mean, he described Earth for a little bit. Yeah, he said what we started out like, you know. Yeah. Like, um, and he said, he, you know, what other, what he thought other beings on other planets would look like. Exactly. <laughs> they would have to, um, you know, depend on the environment of the planet, I guess. <laughs> yeah, man. We said the air created greenness. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like the Bible. <laughs> ah, very, very simplistic way of looking at things, Carl. Uh, man, man. Uh, I think he's right on a lot of shit. <laughs> I think Carl's right on a lot of shit, low key. 